Hello, saints. Peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. I hope everybody is doing fine today. So far, we've gone through Acts chapter 1, all the way through Acts chapter 9, and we've seen the rise and the fall of the kingdom gospel. We also saw the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw how Matthias was chosen by Lot to be the twelfth apostle. We saw the Holy Spirit come down at Pentecost upon the apostles in the kingdom program. And we saw how Peter heals and preaches and Peter and John are arrested and released. And uh, the, all the believers are selling their property, collecting the money and living in a community type of environment. They're sharing with each other. There's no need for anybody to worry about food. As far as they're concerned, they're in the last days. They're told not to worry about anything that the Lord will provide for all their needs. We saw the death of Ananias and Sapphira, how they lied to the Holy Spirit. They said they sold their property and they gave all their money, but they didn't. They both lied and they paid a dear price for that. We saw how the apostles preach and they heal the gifts that are involved with the kingdom gospel. Stephen's speech and his stoning and his death. And we also are introduced to our apostle Paul and how he he persecuted the church back then and we saw Philip in Samaria how Philip uh, talked to the eunuch and was and he baptized him by water and we saw a, an example of the rapture how Philip was taken and moved to a location miles and miles away at the speed of light and we saw the Simon the sor the sorcerer and where the the word simony comes from a person who tries to buy a spiritual position with money and we saw Philip again and the Ethiopian and we saw Saul's conversion now Paul meets our Lord Jesus Christ face to face on the road to Damascus and once in Damascus Paul decides he needs some time alone because this is a, a very shocking uh, experience that he's gone through and he needs some time to take everything in uh, everything that's revealed to him thus far and he leaves Damascus he goes south to Arabia for some time to reflect on this new revelation our Lord Jesus Christ has just shown him then he returns to Damascus for a short time and then after that he goes to Jerusalem now this all takes place over the course of about five or six years then Paul is chased out of Jerusalem he flees to his birthplace the city of Tarsus it's a heathen Roman city filled with Gentiles, the perfect place for Paul and this new gospel. The year is approximately 38 AD, and Paul will stay in Tarsus for the next 10 years, preaching the revelation of the mystery, the gospel of grace, to both Jews and Gentiles. He's in Gentile territory, and he's there for 10 years, 10 years straight. So what else is he going to do while he's there for 10 years? surrounded by a bunch of Gentiles well God gave him the perfect job he's gonna preach this new revelation this new secret gospel the gospel of grace the mystery that was hidden God since before the foundation of the world so during this time that Paul's in Tarsus there's still a lot going on back in Jerusalem with the little flock now at this point in, in time this exact time the kingdom gospel is decreasing in momentum and their grace gospel is increasing in momentum both are happening simultaneously in this small window of time it's important to understand from chapter 10 through 12 we see what's happening behind the scenes during that 10-year period while Paul is preaching in the city of Roman Tarsus something that I also that I need to mention here before we get into chapter 10 uh, I've noticed a lot of people come into my channel watching this study that we're doing on the book of Acts and that's fantastic however there's a small problem a lot of people are picking and choosing different chapters and acts to watch first they're jumping around from chapter to chapter and they're getting confused asking me questions that I've already answered on prior uh, acts studies but they they didn't watch those studies because they're jumping around now this study that we're doing on acts starts at chapter 1 and we'll continue to go video by video, chapter by chapter, consecutively, all the way to the finish at Acts chapter 28. This study is not designed 
for someone to be jumping around from different chapters to different chapters. You have to start at chapter 1 and continue in order. We start with Acts chapter 1 and we build the foundation first through chapter 9 when we get to meet Paul. This is the foundation of right division. How the kingdom gospel fell and how the mystery gospel revealed was born. We need to build the foundation first. Then once the foundation is laid, we then build on top of that foundation. The principles within Paul's gospel, the details, the several different puzzle pieces that need to come together first before we can see the big picture. You can't start with the big picture and reverse engineer it and break it apart into tiny little pieces. You have to take all these tiny little pieces and work them together until you get to see the big picture. Okay, And that is by starting at Acts 1 and going through each chapter uh, consecutively all the way to chapter 28. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I highly recommend not to jump around. Start from the beginning and follow through chapter by chapter. You're going to thank yourself later on and you're going to be less confused down the road. This study will bless you, but only if you do it correctly. Okay, now we move on to chapter 10. Like I mentioned yesterday, we'll be paying special attention to the dates and the places, the different locations that come our way as we move along. By paying attention to the, the locations and the dates, you're going to get a better idea of what's taking place why it's taking place, when it's taking place, all the questions we need in order to rightly divide God's truth accordingly. Amen? So we begin Acts chapter 10 verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and pray to God all way. Now two things here. First we see this word alms and we talked about this in the last study. Alms was a was something in the Mosaic law program. All right? It has to do with giving to the poor. It has to do with works. It's a works based program. So alms was very important in that program. Also at the end of verse 2 we see the word all way. Notice it's not always, okay? Always and all way mean two different, entirely different things. Always means it's always occurring, something that's continuously happening. Happening. All way is another word for in all ways, okay? Two different, two different words, two different definitions. It's important to pay attention to the words, especially in the King James Version Bible, because every word means something very important. Every period, every comma, every semicolon is very significant in the King James Version Bible. Also, three more things involved with verse 1 and 2 is what is a centurion? Notice the first four letters of that word, C-E-N-T. That means hundred. In French, the French word for 100 is cent, C-E-N-T. So a centurion is a soldier, a Roman officer, who's in charge of or in command over a hundred men. So Cornelius is a Roman commander over a hundred soldiers. Secondly, we see the word band. Now it's not a music band, this is a different type of band. A band is a group of about 400 to 600 soldiers. It's a squadron or a company of men, if you will. So here we're introduced to Cornelius. He's a Roman officer in charge of over a hundred men. He's high up in rank. He's in authority and he's a Gentile. He's a Roman. It's also important to notice here that Cornelius was a Gentile believer in the kingdom gospel. He was worshiping along with the Jews. He's taking part in Judaism, the, Mos the Mosaic laws. He'd been considered what we call today a proselyte. Now, it doesn't tell us Cornelius was circumcised. However, but being that he's a Roman soldier, he probably wasn't allowed to be circumcised like the Jews were. So it's important to, to keep in mind uh, who this Cornelius is, what he is, where he is, and what he's doing. Next verse, verse 3, 
he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him Cornelius now the ninth hour of the day being 3 p.m. in the afternoon and when he looked up he was afraid and said what is it Lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God now Cornelius was faithful in giving alms this is part of the Mosaic law once again performing works in that dispensation of the kingdom verse 5 and now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon whose surname is Peter this is Peter the Apostle he lodgeth with one Simon a tanner whose house is by the seaside he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do and again this is Peter the head Apostle verse 7 and when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually and when he had declared all these things unto them he sent them to Joppa on the morrow the next day as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour about noon and he became very hungry and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance and in this trance he saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending upon him as it had been a giant sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air and there came a voice to him rise Peter kill and eat but Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. So what's this sheet full of different animals mean here? What's the purpose of this? Well, Jesus is revealing to Peter that there's no longer a veil between the Jews and the Gentiles. That God is now beginning something new, a new administration, a new dispensation. But it's important to note that Peter didn't fully comprehend all the details concerning this yet. Not until later on when Paul explains everything to him and the other apostles. Verse 17, Now while Peter doubted in himself, what this vision meant, what this vision he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house, and stood before the gate, and called, and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Simon thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them doubting nothing for I have sent them then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said behold I am he who ye seek what is the cause wherefore ye are come and they said Cornelius the centurion a just man and one that feareth God and of good report among all the nations of the Jews was warned from God by a holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee then called he them in and lodged them and on the morrow Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them and he had called together his kinsmen and near friends now at this point in our study Let's, let's take a look at the map on the screen in front of us for a moment. Notice where Joppa is. Peter is in Joppa. The centurion is in Caesarea to the west. And Cornelius, uh, his men, traveled from Caesarea to Joppa to find Peter. Then the next day, they leave Joppa to go see Cornelius in Caesarea. And we're in the time period here of about 40 AD to 43 AD, and Paul is still in Roman Tarsus preaching the gospel of grace to, uh, in, this, in this time period. In verse 25, 
And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. Now Peter makes certain to let Cornelius know that the only person to be worshipped is Jesus Christ, our Lord God, and not man, not saint, or not angel. Verse 27, And as he talked with him, he went in, and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common, or unclean. God showed Peter with this sheet coming down mixed with both clean and unclean animals that no longer was it necessary for the Jews to keep their distance from the Gentiles. The veil has lifted. Both Jews and Gentiles are now considered clean before the Lord's eyes, the creation of a new body of believers. But at this point in time Peter really didn't understand any of this yet. This was all new. Only Paul had been shown the whole truth of this new gospel, a dispensation of grace. Only Paul was given all the details concerning this. So things are still in transition during this time, and there's some confusion taking place. In verse 29, Therefore came I unto you without gain, saying, As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, this was the angel, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of, of God? Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto his children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of these of all things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day, and showed him openly, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness, that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Now we see the new baptism. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is where they were baptized. In 45, And they of the circumcisions which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues, and magnify God, then answered Peter. Okay, now we're seeing the signs of the kingdom gospel here. We're still seeing the kingdom gospel. They're speaking in a different language. Proof of the Holy Spirit baptism is taking place. And because Peter and the other Jews are there, and they're still in this kingdom dispensation, they will follow protocol 
and water baptism uh, for Cornelius and his family. And their protocol is repent, be baptized with the Spirit, with water, and endure in good works till the end. You see, in Peter's eyes, there was no other way at this point. He's still a bit confused as to what's going on. So he does what he knows best. He follows the protocol of the kingdom gospel. Verse 47, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now remember this chart from yesterday. If you look at the screen in front of you in this chart, you'll see a green line at the top left. This is Peter's Gospel of the Kingdom. The orange line at the bottom left is Paul's Gospel of Grace. Moving left to right is the number of years, or time if you will. As we progress over the remaining years in Acts, from left to right, the Kingdom Gospel declines as Paul's Gospel increases. And as they get closer together, meeting in the middle, a small window of time where you'll see an apparent mixing of both Gospels. Now what is this mixing of both, both Gospels? What, are, what is that about? Well, in this small window, you'll see Paul speaking in tongues, healing the sick, baptizing some Jews. There, for a short period of time, there's two Gospels happening at the same time, simultaneously. But as we move further in time towards the right, Peter's Kingdom Gospel continues to decline and Paul's grace gospel continues to increase. And what that does is this. It starts to separate the two gospels. Also, it begins to reduce Paul's abilities in tongues and healings and water baptisms. And finally, at the end of the 30 years or so, by Acts 28, Paul's gifts have come to a complete stop. And Peter's kingdom gospel comes to an end or a pause for 2,000 years. So we can see why Paul was healing at first, performing signs and wonders and so on and baptizing, but that all comes to an end with the kingdom gospel. Like I said, the gospel of the kingdom will pause completely for 2,000 years and it's going to start up again after the rapture happens. Now, while Paul is preaching to the Jews and the Gentiles in Tarsus, there's a lot going on back in Jerusalem with the little flock, the ministry of the 12 apostles. And keep in mind, this little window of time where the body of Christ and the little flock are working side by side, there's a transition going on there. That's what the book of Acts is all about. And it's the reason why Acts is so important to understand. So in Acts chapter 10, we see God turn to the Gentiles in the kingdom gospel. He gives Peter a glimpse of what's taking place with Paul back in Tarsus during that time. A transition from the kingdom to the revelation of the mystery, a new dispensation, a new body of believers made up of both Jews and Gentiles. Salvation by faith alone without the Mosaic laws in the process. And as we get into our next study in chapter 11, we're still in that time period, somewhere between 40 AD and 48 AD, moving closer to Paul's missionary journeys throughout the region. So until then, peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. Lord willing, I'll see you on the next study.